So what we're going to do is initially create a simple plane in Maya. So we went create polygon and plane, and we're just going to extend it out. And then we'll add a sphere, and we'll just scale it up. So the sphere is going to be our environment dome. So what does that mean? We're going to put our HDR uh, lighting texture on there, and then we'll just ray trace it. So just setting up our panels in Maya here. Now that's going to be our, our goal here. This is our final render, so I just saved it in there. And that's what we're going to achieve, but we're starting from scratch here just to show how very quickly we can uh, achieve that ocean look. We're just going to make sure we set up our render man settings. We're going to render quite small at 320 by uh, 240 just so we can do some really quick tests. And then notice that turned on ray tracing there. Uh, so that has to be on because we're going to be ray tracing. Now we went under Maya. Under there, there is a render man folder, and we dropped uh, under shaders a render man shader. So now we're just going to point to our SLO, and that's our shader. That's our lollipop shader shader. It's compiled, so we're going to find it here. And we can see here that we have our ocean color version 2 underscore Maya dot SLO. So that's it. Our shader's in there, and we can see the user interface. And now we're going to drop down another shader mode, shader node. And we want to bring in our displacement shader. Uh, so first, we'll actually bring our image file. Um, and that's the shader that's going to go onto our dome that we created. So that's where the HDR map goes. So we're going to assign that material to our selection. So that's our big dome sphere. And we're just going to rename it here to image file, just so we know what it is in the hypershade. And in that text file node, we need to put in our TEX file. So I'm just going to cut and paste. And voila, we have. Uh, a little preview there of our TX. And back to our initial shader. That's our surface shader for the ocean color. So let's rename that. And we're going to assign that to that simple grid that we created. So we've got the grid. We've got the dome, uh, which we have the image file shader on. And now we want to put the displacement shader on. And we're going to also put the displacement shader on that plane. So how do you do that uh, in Maya? Uh, let's do just a quick preview render here just to see where we're at. Okay, so we've got our ocean shader. We've got our dome, which looks a little bit strange. Um, so let's do flip T-switch to 1. So that just flips the way that the texture is looked up, and there you go. Um, that could be on by default um, just when rendering in Maya. Um, it should kind of flip the T or V coordinate. So that's our flat grid, our ocean. Pretty good, but now we need to add some displacement. So if we drop down another shader node, bring in our displacement shader. It's also an SLO, but it's called Disp Choppy Ocean version 2. And if we view it in our hypershade here, we select the shading group that the surface shader is attached to. This is how you do it in Maya. Because remember, we want to assign two shaders to one piece of geometry, because both the displacement and the surface is going into our grid. So I've just kind of renamed. Um, looking at the shading groups here. And we can see that the surface material, it says ocean color. And now there's a displacement material slot. So we simply add our displacement shader in there. And now we can see that they're both connected. Um, so we've got our shading group. It's connected to the light linker. And we've got our displacement and surface shader and our geometry all connected there. So that's how you put both of those onto one piece of geo in Maya. So let's just do a render out of the box. And I wanted to demonstrate here what happens is it looks really tessellated and there's some artifacts. So we're just going to go into attributes, render man, add displacement attributes. And we're going to just increase our displacement bound to 1. And there you go. We don't have artifacts anymore. So that tells the renderer that we're going to be displacing the geometry. And now we can do a live re-render session to really tweak our parameters. So I'm going to hit play. And this is also why I did like a low resolution, just so we get real quick feedback here. So we move the camera around. 
we're using render view here. And this is a great way to tune our shaders. Uh, just we see real-time feedback, and it obviously also works for displacements. And we can rotate the camera, change shader settings, and just get a live feedback. So this is a great way to tweak it out with our shaders be before doing your high-res final image. So now if we up the resolution, take the shading rate down to one, just we're going to do higher quality for our final render. We had it uh, set on a little bit lower quality settings there, just a preview. And we're just going to do a render. And we're going to render to render view. And hit render again. And voila, here we go. So that's um, our basic setup from scratch out of the box. And here we can see a one-to-one -one view. And of course, you can tweak it from here to get your custom settings.